You'll miss a nice hot breakfast if you don't hurry down. Okay, Mom, I'm practically through my third batch of flapjacks right now. Bye! Some more flapjacks, son? What do you want to do, Mom? Send McNeil and Jones a stuffed engineer? Oh, maybe you won't be able to eat so well in the city. Well, of all I can see, I bet there's a hundred cooks as good as you in the city, almost. <laughs> but they won't care whether you eat or not like I do. Oh, don't think I haven't appreciated all you've done for me since Pa died. Why, I haven't done anything, Johnny. No, nothing. Nothing except spend every cent of the insurance Pa left you for my education. Nothing except years of hard work and a whacking big slice out of your life to make my life easier. You, uh, you'd better get ready for the train. Hey, no, no, somebody think you're anxious to see me go. I want you to make good, son. I will, Ma. Before you know it, I'll send for you. I'll build you a house in the city, a palace fit for a queen. Twenty rooms and six baths. <laughs> one is enough for me. All right, one, but I'll go plate it for you. Oh, gee whiz, it is time. Come on, get on your hat and coat. I'm not going to the station, son. Well, you are too. Everybody's best girl says goodbye right at the train. I'd rather do it here. Okay, Ma, I understand. Goodbye, Ma. Goodbye, son. Take good care of yourself. I will. And you too, Mother. Goodbye. Aren't you, Fraser? Oh, good evening, Mr. McNeil. Well, I got an idea on that automatic pump job for Franklin Gas, and I thought I'd get it down while it was hot. I see. It takes away considerable curvature, eh? Yes, sir, and makes the flow that much more efficient. Hmm. How long have you been with us? About two months. Well, that's good work. You keep that up, and we'll have to find a better spot for you. Gee, that's swell. Hmm? I mean, thanks. <laughs> good night. Don't you work too late. Oh, good night, sir. special pains to find out. Not one of the two bosses has got a beautiful daughter, and Horatio Alger's been dead for 40 years. <laughs> so, why work like a mule? I like it. Some fun. 
You're sticking to your job, aren't you? Yeah, by the skin of my teeth. Fellas got to have a steady stake to fall back on when those ponies don't run right. Ponies? Yeah, old eaters. Hay burners. You know, horses. Cleaned up yesterday. 160 bucks from 21. Wow. What do you say, kid? Uh, put five spot for you on the seventh of Pimlico. I got a hot tip. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, you're a sucker, Fraser. This nag's ripe and it's gonna pay off at 30 to one. Haven't you got somebody would like to see you with a roll like this in your pocket? Yeah. What do you say? Five bucks on the nose? For your best girl. Yeah. For my best girl. And now Johnny's been promoted again. Why, he's been made a member of the firm. Practically a partner. I've just had a letter from my Johnny. You know, he's been promoted. He's a partner in the firm now. McNeil and Jones and Fraser. Oh, and he's a mighty good boy, too. He sends me his check every week, almost. And I'm like... <laughs> you know, I guess people get tired hearing me always talking about my Johnny. Good afternoon, Mr. Fraser. Cut out the Mr. Steve. What's in your mind? I'm busy. I'll say you're busy, busy as a bee. But I notice it's me that brings you most of your honey. Another winner? 14 to 1. I never did see such a guy for luck. Well, why are you so sad about it? I didn't think it could last. You chose Sally the Third to win, so I chose Alexander the First. The Third came in first, and the First also ran. <laughs> well, I'll split with you. Fair enough. What do you say we celebrate? Oh, I can't spare the time. Oh, come on. You worked hard all day. Why don't you have some fun at night? Say, when's the last time you got your nose wet or had your arm around a girl? Oh, I never have. What? Never? Well, hardly ever. Oh, we got to change all that. You're meeting me tonight at 7, see? We're going to have dinner and... Thanks, George. Madeline here yet? She's dressing, sir. Tell her I'll be back to see her later. Yes, sir. Who's Madeline? Why, she's a star on the floor show. Wait till you see her. You're a steady girl? I oh, wish you was. I haven't got enough jack for a Jill like her. What do you have to drink, Johnny? Oh, uh, whatever you have. Uh, have a scotch and soda. And tell the bartender who it's for. Tell him not to be so scotch with the scotch. Yes, sir. You'll have to get a tuxedo, John. Well, this was your idea. And anyway, I can't afford it. I know, I know. It's OK. Besides, nobody will mistake you for a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see you later. I'm going back to say hello to Madeline. Hold the fort and the scotch. <laughs> Come in. Oh, it's you. Why the sour puss, sister? You know why. That was a swell tip you handed me. I lost ten bucks. Ah, forget it. There's twenty. Well, mirror, mirror on the wall. Is he a right guy after all? I've been trying to tell you that for months, but you wouldn't believe me. Just the same, I've got a sneaking suspicion I have to do something for that extra ten. Not a thing, babe. Except get a new laugh. Uh-uh. There are no new laughs. I've heard them all. Well, you don't hear this one. You see it. Or rather him. After your number, I want you to come over and meet Johnny Fraser. Is that the laugh's name? Yeah. But sometimes I think the laugh's on me. Honest, this guy's the luckiest stiff I ever met. He's been in the office only half as long as I have, and he's practically a member of the firm already. He's not a bad-looking kid, but he's never had a girl in his life. Sweet 24 and never been kissed. Go away. Hey, Madeline, you're on next. Coming. Won't you come over to the table later? What'll I have to do, drink milk? Well, I've got a show to do. See you later, maybe. Welcome home. Well, 
You liked it. Oh, gee, that was beautiful. The song of the girl. Both. And you know her well? Gee, I'd like to meet her. Uh, could you? Well, I tried, Johnny, but she's been brought up very strict. And she doesn't like to meet strangers. That's what I thought. You know, you can sort of tell she's that kind of a girl just by looking at her. You know what I mean. I mean, she... Oh, uh, hello, Madeline. Uh, won't you join us? I'd love to. Uh, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Mr. Fraser. Uh, Johnny, this is Miss Kirby. Well, uh, what do you say we all sit down? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you like dancing, Mr. Fraser? Oh, yes. Well, I'm not very good at it. Perhaps you need a little practice. Would you like to dance with me? Oh, I'm afraid I'll step all over you. <laughs> I'll take a chance. All right, you asked for it. <laughs> uh, what'll you have to drink? A glass of milk. Johnny, you can look now. Oh, uh, hand me my dress, will you, darling? Oh. Thanks for the flowers, Johnny. Oh, I didn't send them. You didn't? Well, I wonder who they're from. Take a look at the card, Johnny. They're from Steve. From Steve? That's funny. Jealous? Oh, terribly. Only because I didn't think of it first. Your song was lovely tonight, Madeline. Better than last night? Well, I like it better every time you sing it. You're sweet, Johnny. You think so? I wish I could tell you what I think of you. Do you really like me, Johnny? You want me to prove it? Well? All right. I'll take you to dinner tonight. <laughs> All right, but not to the automat. Oh, no, no. Some, some real nice place. Why don't you say we have dinner right here at the club? Suits me. Come on. Well, those flowers, aren't you going to wear them? Pretty, aren't they? 
but they're not from the right man. It's been a lovely supper, Johnny. And as a reward, you may come to the rehearsal of my new show tomorrow. Oh, uh, what time? Eleven o'clock. I'm afraid I can't. You see, I've been playing hooky from the office pretty often lately, and... Oh, well, don't come if you don't want to. But, darling, I do want to. It's, it's just that I'm behind in my work, and... Oh, to the devil with it. I'll be here. I'm dying to hear you sing that new song. What's the matter? Oh, nothing, nothing. It's all right. Cheer up. Saturday's payday, isn't it? Not for me, it isn't. I've drawn ahead of my salary. Uh, listen, Madeline, I, I won't be able to take you to that weekend party those friends of yours are giving. I, I just simply can't afford it. But I've already accepted. Oh, it's all right, Johnny. I'll find someone to take me. Maybe Steve. You're not going to that party with Steve or anybody else? Why not? Because you're going with me. Don't worry, I'll manage it somehow. Thank you. Here. Thank you. I just saw both the bookies and they won't wait. They want your 100 and my 60 by tomorrow noon or else. Or else what? Or else somebody will sidle up to you on the street and the first thing you know, you'll have a broken arm. Just as a polite reminder. And the second reminder might not be so pleasant. They don't scare me. They might scare you out of your job, though. What do you mean? You know how straight-laced McNeil is. Well, I'll go to him, sure. Then maybe you won't have this nice new office very long. Not if McNeil and Jones find out their genius was just another playboy. I've racked my brain for days trying to think of something. I even tried to peddle the patents they own on that new tight transformer. There's still one way out. What? You're in charge of the petty cash draw. That's enough. You sign a voucher for a lot of new supplies. They won't even miss the extra 200 until the 10th of next month. No. By that time, you can recoup. Your luck's bound to turn. Then you can put it back, take out the voucher, and nobody will know anything about it. I won't do it. Well, if you don't, you'll lose your job. I won't do it, I tell you. OK. That's the way you feel about it. Send Fraser in here right away. How much of this did you get? Nothing. Not a cent. I have different information. I know it was you who persuaded him to gamble. You who introduced him to nightlife. Is that a crime? The only crime is that I have not sufficient proof to put you where you belong. Now get out of this office. Get out and stay out. It's okay with me.
I suppose you know what I want to see you about. Yes, sir. Just what did Steve Carson have to do with this? Nothing. I'm very disappointed in you, Fraser. I had great hopes of you. I thought we'd found in you the kind of young blood an old firm like this needs. I'm very glad I found out in time that it was bad blood. This is your man, officer. Sorry, kid, but it looks like you're gonna be in there a long time. Unless we can raise some money. Did you see Madeline? Yep. Well, what'd she say? Forget about it, kid. She barely remembered your name. A lady to see you, Fraser. Ma. Tommy. How did you find out? Well, you didn't write. And my letters came back, so I came to the city to find you. They told me at the place where you... you used to work. Mom, I didn't want you to know. Oh, never mind, Johnny. Mr. McNeil just made a mistake. You're not guilty, and he's bound to find it out. What makes you so sure I'm not guilty? Well, I know my own son, don't I? Now we must find some way to get you out of here. I can get him out okay. All we've got to have is a little money. I've got a lot of connections. Mother, this is Steve Carson, a friend of mine. How do you do, Mr. Carson? How much money would it take? Well, uh... And here's a $200 to repay what you lost through Fraser. I don't want to be too hard on the lad, but he's altogether too clever for his own good. I'm afraid if he gets away with it this time, it will only encourage him to embrace a life of crime. But Fraser's no criminal. If I wasn't sure of that, you think I'd have taken all this trouble to raise the money for him? Well, it's much against my better judgment. But I feel very sorry for the boy's mother. All right. I'll telephone the district attorney and tell him I won't prosecute. Thank you very much, Mr. McNeil. Carson, it was very decent of you to do this for Fraser. I'm afraid I misjudged you. Would you like your old job back? No, Mr. McNeil. I'm making a lot more money. In a new line. So, Mrs. Fraser, I had to spend the whole $2,000 you gave me and a few dollars of my own besides. Well, I have almost $100 left. Won't you let me give you that? Oh, no, Mrs. Fraser, I couldn't think of that. Helping you and Johnny has been a real pleasure. Well, you've certainly been a friend indeed, Mr. Carson. But you'll promise me not to let Johnny know about me selling the house, won't you? You can depend on that. He'll never know it from me. Well, goodbye. Oh, aren't you going to wait and see Johnny? He'll want to thank you. I was afraid of that. Uh, you just tell him I had an appointment and I couldn't wait. Goodbye. Knowing you has done me a lot of good, Mrs. Fraser. How do you like it? It's rather modest. Oh, it's real nice, Ma. Are you sleeping here? Oh, no, you take that room. It doesn't matter. No, no, no. It's better for you. Here, here, stop that. I'm the porter. Now, you sit right down here like that and you tell me where you want things. Let me help you. No, no, nothing doing. I'll have it all done in a jiffy. What's this? My report card from school. Oh, those are just some things a silly old woman say. Oh, wait a minute. Dear Mom, leaving here so I won't make any more trouble for Pa. I love you very much, Johnny. That was a long time ago, Johnny. Hmm. What? Ma, you mean to say you never cashed those checks I sent you? That's right. I never did. To me, they were like the gold stars your teacher used to put on the report cards. 200, 240, 270, 300, 330. Wow, we're rich. We're rich, Ma. Oh, oh boy. Oh, oh. Stop it, Johnny, stop it. Mother, you're an angel. Well, you know, this will hold us over till I can get a job. I'm going out right now to start looking for one. I'll catch one of these and bring you home a nice juicy steak, huh? <laughs> Goodbye, Ma. See you later. Goodbye, son. Oh, uh, excuse me, ma'am. I didn't know they'd rented this apartment. I was just gonna do a little cleaning. I'm Terry, the superintendent. Superintendent? Yes, sir. Uh, but I'm the janitor, too. Uh, 
Where do you want these things put, ma'am? In the bedroom, please. That's my son. Fine little boy, ma'am. Mm. He is a fine boy. He's out looking for a job right now. Darling, you mustn't feel this way. You're a good boy, and someone is bound to want you. Nobody wants a jailbird. Oh, don't say that. It isn't true. Unfortunately, it is true. You... You mustn't become bitter, son. I know how you feel. How can you know how I feel? Did you ever tramp the streets looking for work day after day, week after week, and for what? Had any experience? Got any references? Can't use you. Oh, if I have to listen to that just one more time. Oh, don't, son. You're tired and discouraged. And you're hungry, too. You rest here and try to relax while I fix you something nice. You know, son, I feel that everything will turn out all right. God will help us if we just put our faith in him. Yes, Ma. Come in. Hello, Terry. Good evening, ma'am. I wonder if you folks would help me out of a little jam. Why, of course, Terry. What is it? Well, you see, ma'am, it's this way. A cousin of mine has got a little place out in the country where he keeps chickens and things like that, and he's always bringing me stuff. Today, he brought me a couple of pullets, but I won't be able to use but one. So I thought maybe you folks would do me a favor and eat this one to keep it from going to waste. Why don't you save it till tomorrow or the next day? Oh, you're just spoiled, ma'am. I ain't got no icebox down in my place. And besides, I don't care much about chicken, no harm. Well, if you're sure... Yes, 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 thanks. I hope you enjoy it, ma'am. Good night. Oh. See, Johnny, manna from heaven. Yes, ma'am. Manor from heaven. Dolly, don't you think you'd better get some sleep? You look tired. You're right, ma. I am tired. Guess I'll turn in. Feel a little better, son? Sure, ma. Don't worry. I'll be okay. Good night. Oh, I nearly forgot. I traded rooms with you today. I'll uh, sleep in here now. Well, why? What's the idea? Well, that couch is too short for you to sleep on. It's just right for me. Run along now, son. All right. Good night. Johnny, what are you doing up at this hour? That's what I want to ask you. How long has this been going on? 
That's why you traded rooms with me. That's why there's still food in my stomach. That's why you had faith that God would provide. John. So you were scrubbing floors for me, huh? Well, that's more than I can take. I'm the one who should be working. I'm the one who should earn the living. And if I can't do it one way, I'm going to do it another. I don't like the way you say that, son. Never mind. I know what I'm doing. I've been knocking on the world's front door. Mother, nobody would answer. I'm going to try the back door now. And if that won't work, I'll climb in the window. Johnny, where are you going? I'm going to look up a friend of mine. Who? The best friend I ever had. Steve Carson. Now listen, boss. This guy's a tough egg and he's not going to kick in. Tough, is he? <laughs> we'll soften him up a little. Is the guy outside wants to see you. Says he's an old friend of yours. Johnny Frazier? Frazier? The last I heard of him, he was in jail. I wonder what he wants. Hmm? One good way to find out. Uh, send him in. Hello, Steve. Hello, Johnny. When did you get out? Oh, no offense. What's on your mind? I want a job. Got a spot for me here? Well, you're an engineer, Johnny, and a pretty good one, too. But not the kind of engineer we need in our business. I know all about that. I don't care if your business is shipping fat missionaries to Cannibal Islands. I want a job. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I like that. I believe we can use you. <laughs> Fine. When do I start? Well, there's no time like the present. What time is it? 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? Boss said he'd be here at 10. You suppose something could happen? It's possible. Hello. No. Oh, this is Steve. Yeah, he's here. Tell him what? No. When? Okay. Okay, we'll wait. What's the matter? The boss. He's killed. Jimmy, too. Where does that leave us? Do you realize what this means? I wanted to say something. Who's going to take charge of things? I am. Objections? No. Well, Ma, this is your new home. Johnny, I can't tell you how lovely it is. What? Why, Terry, what are you doing here? I got me a new job now, Mrs. Frazier. I'm working for real quality folks now. I gave Terry a job, Mother. He's going to drive the new car. I'm so glad. How handsome you look in your uniform, Terry. Yes, ma'am. Can't drive no swell car in a hand-me-down clothes. Why didn't you get some gold braid put on it, Terry? Well, I wanted to, but the man said you wouldn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Where shall I put these bags? Right in there. Son, I'm, I'm so proud of you. Oh. Well, I have to get back to the office. You want to rest a while and get your things unpacked, huh? All right. But you'll be home for dinner. Sure, sure. <laughs> Boss, this is an elegant place. That's what it is, elegant. Oh, I guess we get along all right here, Terry. Even if your cousin doesn't bring you any more chickens. 
<laughs> Bye, Ma. Terry, you stay and help Mother get things straight. I'll drive myself. Don't be late for dinner. Oh, by the way, Terry, how is your cousin? Huh? Oh, he's all right, Miss Frazier. But we had a little argument, and I don't see him very often anymore. All right, boys, see you in the morning. Okay, Come boy. on, slugs, I'll buy you a snort. Hiya, Stephen. Hey, boys. I thought you were going to Buffalo today. Who's there? I'm back. The deal is all settled, boy. Good. Uh, by the way, I met a friend of yours there. She rode back with me. She? Yep. Madeline. Madeline. She here? Right outside. I won't see her. And since you brought her here, I'll let you throw her out of here. You might at least throw me out yourself, Johnny. Aren't you going to ask him to sit down, Johnny? I was in love with you once, Madeline. It was a long time ago. I fell for your heart and I landed in jail. My mother sold her house and scrubbed floors to get me out. You were a bad check I signed. But I don't intend to have you bounce back on me again, is that clear? Or shall I say it with gestures? You've changed, Johnny. And I think I like you better this way. I'm flattered. But not interested. You'll excuse me now, Miss Kirby. I have some work to do. I'll say goodbye now, because you'll be gone when I finish. Seems good to be alone at last in our own home, huh? Yes, darling. Surprise! You're looking wonderful, Johnny. It's so good to see you. You're looking great yourself, Ma. And you, my daughter. <laughs> Welcome to, shall we say, our home. Thank you. Well, look who's tending bar. Howdy, Mr. Johnny. How do you do, Miss Frazier? Come and get it, folks. Oh, Wait, we've been waiting for it. Come on, let's everybody get together and have a couple of drinks there. There you are, darling. Take this. Yeah. You fair. You must be tired, dear. You'll feel better after you freshen up a bit. Yes. I'll just be a minute, darling. Right. <laughs> I'm sure glad to see you, Mr. Johnny. Your ma and me got to missing you. I missed her, Terry. Missed you, too. Go on. A man don't miss nobody on his honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, folks? We all have a drink to the bride. I'll drink mine to the groom. <laughs> <laughs> I want things. Pretty fair so far, Johnny. But I'm a 
afraid you're going to have trouble with McCarthy again. Mm. Oh, lovely girl. I'm glad you like it. Makes you look so much thinner. <laughs> Thank you, dear. See at the office in the morning. Okay. Uh, pardon me, do you mind if I have a word with my wife? I, I want to tell her a secret. What a man. Just got back from his honeymoon and he still has secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking the same thing I am? Maybe. What are you thinking? I'm wondering how soon we can ask him to go without being too impolite. <laughs> how? You know, Steve, I always had an idea that Madeline was your girl. Whoever told you you had an idea? Can't take it, eh? Hey, Johnny. Can I have a word with you? Thanks, dear. What's your mind, George? Well, can I see you alone for a minute? Sure, come on. And they said how late was it? The new old fellow said, well, it was too late. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think you're kind of a poor audience for me tonight. I don't think I better tell anymore. Eh? Oh, oh, oh. What have you there, bartender? Milk punch. <laughs> Here's your highball, Miss Fraser. A nice warm glass of milk. Thank you, Terry. That's very thoughtful. That reminds me. I heard a pippin today. Gather round. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I'll go to my room, Terry. I'm pretty tired. Excuse me. The old snooper spying on me already. Well, I'll not stand for it. I'll... Take it easy, take it easy. You think she'll tell him? Let her tell. Who cares? Oh, hello, darling. Be with you in a minute. What's the matter? Plenty. Johnny, we might as well have this out right now. I'm not going to start my married life with a jealous old woman snooping around. You mean my mother? Oh, darling, you don't know her. She's the grandest person in then the world. Then you can live with her. I won't. What happened, Madeline? Never mind what happened. But get this straight. I married you, not your whole family. And you, you'll have to make your choice. Say, you two, we've been looking for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right. We'll, we'll be right with you. Why don't you two lovebirds come here and thank us for throwing this party? Must you really go? But it's so early. Yes, yes, just the start of the evening. <laughs> Good morning, son. Good morning. Johnny, I feel it's my duty to tell you something. About Madeline? Yes. I don't want to hear anything about it. Mother, look. There's one thing that must be understood right now. Madeline is my wife. You two will have to get along, or... I understand, son. You're absolutely right. I'll get out of the way. Oh, now, that isn't necessary at all, Ma. If you'll only just try to understand, if you'll just... But I do understand perfectly. No apartment ever built is big enough for a wife and her husband's mother. That's not your fault or mine or... or Madeline's. That's just... That's just the way things are. Oh, if... There's no other way, Johnny. I'll move out. Well... Where'd you go? 
Hill, there's a nice place just a few blocks from here. Sort of a boarding house where there's some ladies about my own age. I got acquainted with them while you were gone. Well, if, if you're sure that's what you want to do. Yes. That's what I want to do. I'll go pack my things. I'll have Terry drive you over. I'll take you myself, but I have an appointment. I know. Good morning, Madeline. Good morning. Excuse me. I have some packing to do. Well? My mother's leaving, moving out. Today. That's what you wanted, wasn't it, Johnny? Yes, I suppose so. Goodbye. And that's the way it's going to be. McCarthy's going to play ball or somebody's going to get hurt. Well, uh, let's hope it's not us. What's the matter? You're not scared, are you, Steve? Why don't you knock when you come in? Did you get her all settled? Yep. What's this? Them's the keys to your car. I'm quitting. Oh, you're quitting, huh? Just like that. Yes, just like that. I don't wait for no rat. Leave him alone. But he calls you a rat. You might be right at that. And in less than two years after he graduated from school, he was a partner in the biggest engineering company in the city. Well, Mrs. Fraser, for weeks now, it's been nothing but Johnny and Johnny and more Johnny. But we've never seen him. Where is this wonder boy of yours? Why don't he ever come to see you? Well, you will see him today. This is his birthday. And I've knitted this sweater for him. I bet that's him now. Hello, Mrs. Fraser. <laughs> sort of dark, isn't he? <laughs> oh, come in, Terry. Didn't Johnny come with you? Uh, no, ma'am. He was just fixing to get in the car to come over when something awful important come up and he had to go tend to it. He sure was disappointed, too. Uh, but he sent this candy and these your flowers. Oh, wasn't that thoughtful of Johnny? By the way, young man, just what is a business engineer? Oh, I don't know. You know Terry, like Johnny. Like Johnny? Oh. <laughs> oh, that's different. <laughs> you mean a business engineer? Oh, well, you see, uh, a business engineer, he, uh, uh, take an engineer on a train. What does he do? He runs trains. Well, a business engineer runs businesses. Other people's businesses. Well, if I had a business, I wouldn't want somebody else to run it. Quite a few people feel that way, ma'am. <laughs> Guess I better be getting along, Miss Frazier, uh, unless I can do something for you. Oh, that reminds me. Here's a sweater I knitted for Johnny's birthday. Maybe you'd better take it to him. Me? You don't mind, do you? Oh, no, no, of course not. Uh, good day, Miss Frazier. Good day, ladies. Poor Johnny. He works so hard. I know what I'll do. I'll telephone and wish him a happy birthday. for your birthday. She asked me to bring it over. Well, thanks. Aren't you, uh, aren't you going to wish me a happy birthday? Yeah. I hope you have all the luck you deserve. Thanks for the flowers and candy you brought my mother. I'll give you a check. I did that to make an old lady happy, and I don't want no check from you. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to show you something. What do you think of that? 
Nice house. That's Mrs. Fraser's new home. Mrs. William Fraser. Mrs. William Fraser? That's right. You mean your mother? Happy birthday, Mr. Johnny. Oh, oh excuse me. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Say, uh, you got a new job yet? No, sir. <laughs> now, you all know what to do. All right, let's see if you do. Now, just imagine I'm Mrs. Frazier. I'll come in, let's see what you're gonna do. All right, here I come. That's fine. I'm going over and get Mr. Johnny, and we pick up Mrs. Fraser, and like we get back here about one o'clock. And if any one of you get things messed up, I'm going to raise more dust around here than the alligator did when the pond went dry. Oh, hello. Thought you'd surprise me, didn't you? Surprise you? What do you mean? Was this to have been a peace offering, dear? No. I bought that house for my mother. Your mother? Oh, I see. This skimpy little dump is good enough for me to live in. But your mother has to have a palace. Listen, Madeline. You wanted mother out of the apartment. If I choose to buy the White House, it's none of your business. Then why don't you go and live in that house with your charming mother? That's an idea. Go ahead. Do you think I'll care? All I hear around here is my mother this, my mother that. I'm sick of it. Well, boss, everything's ready. Man, you're more than sure going to be surprised. I've got a surprise for you, too, Terry. I'm going to be an engineer again. A business engineer? No, no, I mean a real engineer. I've been offered a job by the company that bought the patents on an old invention of mine. That's where I got the money to buy the house. Not here. Well, that's great. Come on, Mr. Johnny, your mom will be waiting for you. Well, oh, I can't go till I get a long-distance call from Steve in Buffalo. Buffalo? Yeah. Well, on my way down here, I saw Steve going to your apartment house. Well, you must be mistaken. No, I'm not. He got out of his car and went right in. He seemed to be in a hurry, too. Come in. You send for me, boss? Yes, George, sit down. Terry, you go over and get Mother. Take her to the new house, and I'll meet you there at 2 o'clock. Okay, boss. Would you like anything else, Miss Fraser? No, thank you, Terry. But I do wish Johnny would come. You know, Terry, this is the happiest day of my life. This beautiful home doesn't, well, it doesn't mean just a house to me. It's proof, proof that, that Johnny is a success, that he does love me. Uh, perhaps you can understand if I put it this way. Is your mother alive? No. Well, mine is, and she thinks I'm the greatest guy in the world. I want her to go on thinking so. George, you know I'm not yellow. But there's one thing I am afraid of. If she ever finds out now, what I am... Johnny, it's all right with me and the rest of the boys, but this fellow Steve Carson, I tell you, kid, it'll be no dice. Goodbye, George. I'll take care of Steve Carson. Well, is he still at the office? No, they said he's gone home. And I'm going over there to get him. Why don't you phone? Well, he might need me. He might be having a little trouble. Trouble? Yes, with his automobile or something, you know. Uh, now, you just sit right down there and take it easy, and I'll be back in a jiffy. And Mr. Johnny with me. <laughs> and if you need anything, just ring this bell here, and... Where did... Oh, here it is. <laughs> now, I'll get you some nice music on the radio, and I'll be back before you know it. <laughs> well... 
remember, Stevie, I'm a married woman. Just a, just a bride, in fact. Why bring that up at a time like this? Well, Johnny might come home. He does occasionally. Not him. He's too busy fixing up palaces for his ma. Yeah. Wouldn't that burn you? He's through, I tell you. This bunch is moving in, and he'll either get out or get carried out. Then I'll be giving orders, not taking them. It's all set. I'm gonna take charge of things, and any palaces I build, babe, gonna be built for you. When does all this happen? Right away. I'm gonna lay low in a nice, quiet little spot until the dust settles. Would be nice if you were with me. Johnny, if anything happens with the money in there? We'll let him worry about that. I'm looking out for myself. Wanted to surprise his mother, did he? Well, he's due to get a little surprise himself. <laughs> That's what you think. Johnny. I hope I'm not intruding. Johnny, let me explain. Get out. But listen, I... Get out. Johnny. Get out. I'll settle with you later. You know, you remind me of a present some kids once gave me on April Fool's Day. A bundle so big I could hardly carry it. And inside all the wrappings was one little marble. That just about sizes you up, Steve Carson. Six feet of dirty wrappings around a heart the size of a peanut. But listen, Johnny. I was going to Buffalo. I got my bags in the car. They're all packed. I just came here to say goodbye to you. Shut up. Have you got a gun, Steve? No. No, Johnny. I... I have... we do? I call the police. The police? Well, let's get out of here. Come on. Hurry. Come on, let's take Johnny's car. I have a key. This car. He's getting away. After it. Fraser. 
Hello, copper. A little bit late. Yeah, but not too late, I guess. The man you want has just left. But if you... Gosh, I thought it was Steve. What's the matter, boss? You hey? Who did it? Never mind, Terry, I'm all right. The police. I think so. Oh, come on. Terry! Terry! Get out of here, Mr. Johnny. Your mom's been waiting for you a long, long time. Excuse me, Mrs. Frazier. It's nearly 7 o'clock. The cook says it'll be ruined. May we serve it now? Has my son come? No, ma'am. Not Terry either. Well, you and the others go ahead and eat your dinner. I'll wait for my son. Thank you, ma'am. We interrupt our broadcast to bring you a special police bulletin. Attention, all citizens. Be on the lookout for Johnny Frazier, notorious racketeer, Wanted by police in connection with the wounding this afternoon of Detective Arthur Sanford in Fraser Woodbury Avenue apartment. It is known that Fraser was seriously wounded, and doctors are warned to be on the alert as the police believe that the wounded racketeer will be forced to come out of hiding to seek medical aid. His description is as follows. Height about 5 feet 11 inches. Weight about 150 pounds. Dark hair, brown eyes. And when last seen was wearing a striped blue suit. I came. I got here. Charlie! Get a doctor, quick. Hold it. You're his mother? Oh, Lord, take my son, take him. Once I ask you to spare him, to let me keep him, remember, and you heard me. Hear me now, Father, take my son. No one can help him, but you. <laughs> 